My dear brothers and sisters, in the gospel of today, a disciple of Jesus expresses a desire to learn how to pray. He says, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. It is a common practice among uh, Jewish teachers to instruct their pupils on how to pray. So it's uh, not surprising that one of the disciples of Jesus would ask Jesus to teach them how to pray because it was a normal tradition. It seems that the initiative for Christ's teaching of this prayer, according to the Gospel of Luke, comes from a disciple. While uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, we see that it's actually Christ's initiative to teach his disciples how to pray. Anyway, even in Luke, we see that this request from the disciple came after they have observed Jesus from time to time pray. So they found the need and the importance of prayer. Christ chose to teach them by example the importance of prayer by praying himself. So after some time, the disciples naturally got fascinated and developed an interest in prayer. And they asked Jesus, teach us to pray. In other words, teach us how to raise our hearts and mind to God. Because that is what prayer is all about. Teach us to strike a relationship with God. Teach us to commune with God. And Christ be began the teaching by saying, when you pray, say this, Father, our Father in heaven. What does that mean? By allowing the disciples to address God with the name Father, Christ is allowing the disciples to address God in the same manner that he himself does. He, in his prayers, always begins with the invocation, Father. In other words, he's inviting the apostles to share and participate in his sonship. He himself is the son, and he addresses God as the Father. So, Christ, in using this term to begin the prayer, and using this invocation to begin the prayer, is making a radical shift from the usual Jewish form of addressing God. In the Jewish tradition, when one addresses God, he uses the name Adonai, which means my Lord. And we, ha we saw that in the first reading in Abraham's prayer. Each time he talked to God, he would use the name, my Lord, Adonai. So Christ is telling us to come in and participate in this divine inner life, in, in a life of divinity, When we use the term Father, we are forming a kind of uh, familiarity which is associated with that term. We are forming a familiarity with God because uh, naturally in a family, a child uh, addresses the father, he calls him father, uh, the, the, the father in the house. And he expects from the father acts of love. He expects from him protection. He expects from him that he provides for him. God does all these and even more. He asks us through his son to ask and we shall receive, to seek 
and we shall find to knock and the door will be opened to us. Jesus, after the invocation, our Father goes on to teach his disciples what they are to pray for, how they are to pray, beginning with not the personal needs of man. First of all, we see how it is presented. The need, the personal needs comes forth. First of all, he begins by adoring God, acknowledging his uh, greatness, majesty, his reign. First, uh, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then fourthly comes the personal needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Most often when we come to pray, what usually comes to our mind when we kneel down to pray is the personal problem. What initially motivated us to go into the church to pray, as soon as we fall on our knees, we begin to enumerate those problems. Christ is telling us that is not how to begin. You begin, first of all, by acknowledging God. Then you present your need. Then what follows after the personal need is the need for forgiveness of sins. And we see in this particular petition that it is the only one that has a condition attached. Forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespassed against us. We are saying we have fulfilled our own part. We have forgiven our neighbors. We have forgiven those who have offended us. That is why we ask for your own forgiveness for our own sins. So we have to be coherent when we say this prayer. But first of all, examining our consciences to make sure we don't bear grudges and that we have forgiven our neighbors. Then when we have done that, we can present in a, a more consistent form this prayer. It becomes coherent when we say it. Then Christ is telling us at the end of the teaching of this prayer to be persistent, to be insistent, and to be fervent in prayers. He gave an example with someone who had to attend to his friend on a journey, and he had nothing in the house to give him, so he had to rush to a friend's house to ask for bread. And the friend was already asleep with children and the family, and he said, I can't get up to give it to you. And Christ said, if he cannot get up to give it to him, for persistence sake, he would get up. And he said, we should, in the same way, be persistent when we pray. So God cannot be disturbed. He cannot feel disturbed. There are no opening and closing hours in God. He's always available to listen to our prayers. It is up to us to decide to pray all the time, unceasingly. We see the example of persistence also in the prayer of Abraham in the first reading. Abraham kept interceding on behalf of the cities and the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. He kept praying, starting from 45, asked God if we perhaps find 45 people who are good in, this, in these cities, would you still destroy the city? He said, no, I would not do it. And he continued from 45 up till 10. At that point, Abraham said, I think it is enough. It's okay. It's, we'll, we will find at least 10 people in the city. And when he felt the prayer was enough, what happened? Unfortunately, not up to 10 people we are found just in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So in essence, we have to learn 
that we have to pray all the time. Prayers are never enough. We will never say it is now enough. Let us stop praying. When we stop praying, something disastrous might happen. We have got many intentions to pray for. We have seen that in the Lord's Prayer. So we have got many things for which to pray that can keep us busy all the time. We have to note, however, that when we pray, we may not necessarily get what we want, the way we formulated it, the way we asked it. But one thing is certain, God will give us what is good. He will give us his Holy Spirit, and his Spirit will fill us with love. His Spirit will illumine our souls and direct our paths to an end that is beautiful and good.